So we are one month into this new year and most of us are having a great time. Relatively healthy lives, good food, work-life balance, etc, etc. But while we talk about the things important in our lives, how do we forget about about naps, sleeping? I mean, if it was for me, I would get professional sleeper mentioned in my CV. But anyways, back to the topic. Naps. Despite the importance they carry, we overlook them more than often. But today, we won't. So in this video, we will talk about them. In this video, we will discuss what a perfect nap is. First off, what is a nap? Remember those short sleeps you sneak in between your day? Yep. That is a nap. To be more technical, a nap is a short period of sleep, usually taken during the day. One third of American adults nap. Many swear by napping as an effective way to relax and recharge, while others find naps unhelpful and disruptive to their sleep. Not all naps are created equal and many factors impact how helpful naps can be. By understanding the role of napping, you can learn to take effective naps that support your body's internal clock and maintain your energy level throughout the day. So, are there different types of naps? Yes, of course. Naps can be categorized depending on the function they serve. Thinking about what you're hoping to gain from a nap is one part of making a nap work for you. Recovery naps. Sleep deprivation can leave you feeling tired the following day. If you are up late or have interrupted sleep one night, you might take a recovery nap the next day to recompensate for the sleep loss. Prophylactic nap. This type of nap is taken in preparation for sleep loss. For example, night shift workers may schedule naps before and during their shifts in order to prevent sleepiness and to stay alert while working. Appetitive naps. Appetitive naps are taken for the enjoyment of napping. I mean, doesn't that sound fun? Napping can be relaxing and can improve your mood and energy level upon waking. Fulfillment naps. Children have a greater need for sleep than adults. Fulfillment naps are often scheduled into the days of infants and toddlers and can occur spontaneously in children of all ages. Essential nap. When you are sick, you have a greater need for sleep. This is because your immune system mounts a response to fight infection or promote healing and that requires extra energy. Naps taken during illness are considered essential and therefore named as essential naps. Now the question is, are naps good for you? Well, napping can be helpful or harmful depending upon a few different factors such as your age, what time and how long you nap and the reason for your nap. To get the most benefit from napping, it's important to learn how each of these factors affects the impact of a nap. So, what are the benefits of napping? Well, homeostatic sleep drive is the technical term for the feeling of pressure to sleep. It is synonymous with the hunger we feel for food the longer it is after our last meal. When we wake up from a good night's sleep, your homeostatic sleep drive is low. The pressure slowly increases throughout the day until bedtime when we feel sleepy. Sleeping at night decreases sleep pressure and then the cycle begins again the next day. Napping during the day diminishes homeostatic sleep drive, which can help us feel more awake and perform better. As a result, Napping can help with reducing sleepiness, improving learning, aiding memory formation and regulating emotions. As a matter of fact, naps play a special role for drivers. Driving while drowsy is dangerous for you, your passengers and others on the road. 
Drowsy drivers are involved in hundreds and thousands of car crashes. To counter this, the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration recommends to first get adequate amount of sleep, that is, 7 to 8 hours on a nightly basis. Before a long drive, get a good night's sleep. If you start to feel sleepy while driving, the administration recommends drinking caffeine and pulling over safely for a 20 minutes power nap. However, this is not a long-term solution. As naps and caffeine are known to increase alertness for only a short period of time. However, if you're somebody working throughout the day, looking for time to sleep, well, naps are a great solution for you. Now that we've discussed the benefits, what about the harms of napping? Well, napping isn't for everyone. In fact, some people find napping counterproductive. Although napping reduces the sleep pressure, which can combat fatigue, it can also interfere with your ability to fall asleep at bedtime. People who have trouble falling asleep or staying asleep at night, for example, those with insomnia, may want to avoid napping. Sleep inertia or the feeling of sleepiness that you get after waking from a nap can be minimized or avoided by taking shorter naps. However, you can still feel disoriented even after a short nap. So napping may be disruptive if you need to get back right at work afterwards. So how to get the best nap? Well, one significant factor responsible for the varied effects of nap is their length. Anytime we fall asleep, we begin to move through a series of sleep stages. Researchers found that five minute nap are too short to move deep enough through the sleep stages to produce a notable benefit. On the other hand, sleeping for 30 minutes or longer gives the body enough time to enter deep into the slow wave sleep. However, sleeping for too long or waking up from the slow wave sleep can leave you feeling groggy for up to an hour. This period of drowsiness is also called sleep inertia. Yeah, the one that we just discussed. Given these considerations, the best nap length in most situations is one that is long enough to be refreshing but not so long that sleep inertia occurs. Naps lasting 10 to 20 minutes are considered the ideal length. They are sometimes referred to as power naps because they provide recovery benefits without leaving the napper feeling sleepy afterwards. Exceptions to these include essential naps when sick, which are often longer because our body requires more sleep when dealing with an illness. Also, fulfillment naps in children should not be limited to 20 minutes, since children have a higher sleep requirement than adults and they do not really have work deadlines, you know. If you are a healthy adult and wish to take a longer nap, don't do it right before you need to be alert. Keep in mind that napping during the daytime could interfere with your nighttime sleep. So you know when the next time you put up a status calling yourself a night owl and a lover of the night, it's probably because you slept too much during the day. Taking a few steps will set you up for your most successful nap. First is to set an alarm. Studies show that the best nap length for most people is about 10 to 20 minutes. This provides restorative sleep without drowsiness after waking. So if you want to feel alert and productive after your nap, you can counter sleep inertia by limiting the amount of time you spend asleep. Nap early. Napping late in the day can affect your ability to fall asleep at bedtime. Try napping around the halfway point between the time you wake up and the time you plan to go to bed. Create a sleep-friendly environment. To fall asleep, your space should be conductive to napping. Depending on whether you are, you may or may not have the best mattress available, but it helps to nap in a comfortable space that is dark, cool and quiet. Set aside all your worries. Ruminating on sources of stress will keep you awake. If you have trouble letting go of concerns and to-do lists, Try practicing relaxation exercises. 
These can help you fall asleep and wake from your nap feeling refreshed and recharged. Reflect on why you are napping. Thinking about what you hope to gain from your nap when you set intentions, you can plan your nap around these goals. So, all set for a good nap? But we would wait. Before you get going, don't forget to hit the like button. Comment down your views, subscribe to our channel and share it with more enthusiastic learners. Stay curious, stay awesome. Until we meet next, World of Vogue signing off.